Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back finally to another video. Today we are flying the Flight Day Sim 727v3 version 3 that just came out a couple days ago and we'll be going into it um, with some details in mind and s see how well it performs. We're going to do a full flight um, here from uh, Dresden over to to uh, Düsseldorf. So Dresden to Düsseldorf. That's where we're flying. And uh hope you guys enjoyed it. It's about uh, we're expected to fly for about fifty three minutes. We're gonna be fifty three minutes in the air, starting from runway to runway. Block time should be around an additional fifteen minutes, so we'll see. Um Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and a little thing about our uh our uh title here. Yes, it's going to be in depth um procedures. Um, but we're not really going to go over them. I'm just going to do them, and we'll see how things work out. So, hope you guys enjoy, and let's go into the cockpit. As you can see, it is a beautiful flight deck here. Um, though there's some crawling ants here, crawling ants, and SIVA is not very well integrated at the moment. They don't really care about SIVA users, do they? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, they definitely do need to improve some things here that I see. There's a lot of minor, like, little bit of crawling ants everywhere. Um, you can barely notice them, but if you do notice them, they're hard to uh, they're hard to look away from. But otherwise, the flight deck looks absolutely amazing. Looks beautiful. Looks crowded, crammed, complicated, and that's exactly what a 727 is. <laughs> um, which is why they have this whole huge extra space here and here, and they couldn't fit everything here, even though there's a lot of space left. But yeah, so. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing first, though, we need to get our weight and balance going. Um, I want to get that done with and make sure our GPU is connected as well. So we're going to go into the oh, maintenance system is on, as you can see. So ground power unit is enabled. I want to check our true air temperature. Okay, it is quite hot. So I'm going to go ahead and connect our air card as well, uh, just so we can get some air conditioning going. Um, And then we are going to go to wrong one. Weight and balance. And today's passenger count is 103. So let's fill up the first class. Whoops. And 103 passengers. Our uh, zero fuel weight will be 128.7. Perfect. And then our fuel today is going to be at 19,600. Good here. And then it's checked. Our CG is also with limits. And uh, so our loading is completed. We're just going to check our gross weight 148, 690. Alright, that's fine. We're about 600 above um, what was planned, but that's okay. Alright, so weight and balance, everything is checked. So now we do our cockpit safety inspection. So we'll make sure that our flight control switches or guards are closed. Alternate flaps are off, so the guard is closed and both switches are in the off position. Make sure gear is down. Okay. Our transponder here is off. Our hydraulic B pumps are off. Our ground interconnect is closed. Our packs are off. And one thing that is not added, um, which wouldn't be hard to model, is a fuel dump cover. Um, it should be closed. Knowing that it is closed and closes all the way, that autom automatically uh, tells you that all switches are in the off or closed position, um, because there's like a there's like a box on that, or there's like guards on that um, on that cover panel that will automatically switch the uh, or wouldn't even let the uh, wouldn't even let it be able to be closed 
if one of these switches would be in the open position. So we check that, but because there's no cover, we're just going to make sure all these are closed and off. And that is checked. So now we can move to the preliminary copper preparation. We check our maintenance documents, charts, flight plan, make sure all that is on board. I do have all that stuff with me <coughs> and completed and done. Charts are on my iPad and flight plan is on my second monitor. So we're good there. External power, I want to make sure it's off. We do have it uh, connected though, so that's good. Off, just make sure it's off. Can I have power off? Batteries, we're going to now go ahead and turn on. <coughs> and we're going to check our volts. So we're going to go here. We can see our volts. Is at about 24 volts. Our amps will not decrease at the moment because it's off. Turn it on and you'll see our amps decrease and see some things come to life. <coughs> now we do a standby power test. All you do is select your central power to standby, CD light extinguish, and then you should see some systems here pop up, such as the VSIs, both of them, the captain's uh, ADI, and you should see that the, uh, the uh, steer indication here or the gyro indication should disappear and a couple other things the RMIs and everything else should function and that is good standard power test is completed we'll go to external power now we'll make sure our external power AC and DC bolts or our AC volts and our AC frequency um, are checked 400 about 400 Hertz and 115 volts and it's checked and then we can connect the ground power unit and turn it on. And it's already on the external power central bus. That is checked. Now do an APU fire test. We do that early on. Um, so go and just hit make sure that the push button is in. The card's closed and we do a test. Bell cut out, you'll see that the light illuminates, and then to reset it, you have to press twice to reset it. And uh, that is done. Check your pressurization, uh, make sure the mode selector is on auto, and it's on the ground mode. Now, I'll show you fully open, that is checked. <coughs> and we now want to make sure that our master switches are also in the on position. These are our radio master switches, uh, they're basically circuit breakers, and they are on so we can use the radios. Make sure to do emergency exit light test. Go over here to the overhead, select it on, and you'll see that the exit light illuminates. And you'll also see, you also notice a light, a light light illuminate. And turn it back off, and you'll see it turn off. Now just check so emergency exit lights is charged, or are charged and work. And at that moment, we can now go to the SIVA and align it. So make sure we're on position zero. Standby, and our position is actually given us exactly here at our gate. So we are north 51076. Let's make sure that's right 41076. Insert and east 01345. 8. Insert. And once you're ready to align, we'll hit align. And now our SIVA will align. We'll go to our status. You'll see once this reaches about 5, which is reaches 5, which is our required index, you'll see our nav light turn green. And we want it to go down to 0, though. So we're going to wait until it goes down to 0. In the meantime, we can't do our flight plan, but that doesn't come until later. Um, make sure our parking brake is set. And we'll now do a. <coughs> I'll check our ATIS. 108 and uh, I just want to let you guys know that none of this is random um, like all these procedures are directly from the FCOM of the 727 there's only some things that are random um, and that's because I'm only one person I have to somehow distribute the load between one person so I have to do the overhead the uh, flight engineer the co-pilot all that only that is random the, the way I go through each panel is random like, um, like what order I go through each panel is random, but doing the things, doing all the checks is not random. That's definitely from the FCOM. So everything I do is from the FCOM. It's just choosing what panel I want to go over first is random. Um, it has some sequence. Um, like the FCOM somewhat describes it. 
it describes you to do the overhead first and the flight engineer's panel f next. But then also after all that, the captain and first officer also go over the overhead and do all that too. So it's, yeah, it gets a little complicated. So with that, let's go and do the overhead scan. There are a couple things that we're going to skip because, like I said before, the captain or the first officer also check a couple things in the overhead, so we're skipping those things for when we get to their procedures. So we're going directly to the navigation switches, make sure they're in a normal position. Do a cargo fire test. Make sure you hear the bell, and you can see the t four indications here. Illuminate, auto break, RTO. Make sure this is off. Okay, passenger signs, no smoking should be on. That is checked. Window heat. This is interesting system here. Um So how you usually do it is you turn it on, you do the overheat test, or you let go of it. The overheat lights should stay illuminated. In this system it doesn't and then you have to reset your window heats. So I'll show you how that's done. So you turn it on. You do the overheat test. You'll see the overheat lights illuminate. Once you let go, the overheat lights should stay illuminated. They should. And that's when you turn them off to reset it. And you keep them off for now because the first officer will later turn them on again. Okay. Check the duct temperatures. They should be like such a close to the outside air temperature. And I keep it on engine two. And then the system is tested actually thoroughly as well. It's kind of interesting. So first things first, you select this to the left system. You see all lights illuminate, and that's normal. Open the valves, and make sure the lights momentarily extinguish, and then re-illuminate. Then you go to Cal, and you want to make sure all lights are illuminated. We, can, we just have to wait a little bit here. The Cal's take a little while. Okay. And the right system, that is checked. Now we go to the wing system, we turn these off again, and we do the same thing but with ground test. So we do ground test, make sure the light illuminates, and let go. Same thing on this side, let go, make sure they illuminate again. So that's complete. You go through this again, make sure that when you're when they're closed, that the all lights illuminate as well. And they do. So that system is checked. Here you just want to make sure the lights distinguish when you turn them on, and that is checked. Okay, the lights can be adjusted here. We don't need any of these lights. It is daytime. And we make sure our position light is on. So now we go down here, and we do the engine fire test and the wheel well fire test. So once you do this test, you want to make sure all three handles illuminate as well as the wheel well. And you can hear the bell, which is checked. You want to check your forward engine instruments here, make sure everything is normal. Obviously EPR should be at zero. Everything N1 should be at zero. Exhaust temperature should be about outside air temperature, um, but close to zero. N2 zero, fuel flow zero, and that is checked. We're using the one, one, the uh, one five engines, which is important to note um, for our performance. We want to check our landing gear. Make sure all green lights are on and it's down. Our speed brake is down to tenth. Flaps are up, and our indication here agrees, and our, and our thrust levers are at idle. Okay. Now the test that is done here, which will cause the auto gate to go away, but that's just how it is. Drop the parking brake, and we want to deplete our hydraulic brake system till about a thousand. using our um, rudder pedals and then once we have that done we turn our parking brake back on and later we will um, recharge the system with the hydraulic system 
and make sure it works. This is why we're doing this. There's a purpose for it. And back in the days, in the 727 days, everything was done by the pilots. Everything was checked by the pilots. So all these checks, you might think, uh, nobody would ever do these days, and you're right, nobody would. But back in the days, um, the flight engineer, the, the captain, as well as the first officer did all these checks. And I just realized we've got an error message here, and I don't know why. I don't know why. we got to go back to standby. Hit a line. Okay, we'll just wait a little bit. What if we get nav? That'll, yeah, okay. So, now it's aligned. I don't know why it gives me an error. I did everything right. Um, anyways. So, yeah. That is checked and depleted. And now we do go to the flight engineers panel. And we check a couple things here as well. First, we want to make sure our oxygen pressure for the crew and the passenger are sufficient. Make sure the system is on normal and no light is indicated. The auto pack trip system is on cutout. Okay. Want to make sure that all engine bleeds are open, which is checked, and that all trip off lights are extinguished. Want to check our uh, air temperatures here. Go to cycle through all of them, and then go to main supply. Left and right cooling doors should be fully open, which are here. If not, you just manually open them. Okay. Cargo heat outflow valve or outflow can be set to normal. Cancer fan can be switched on. One temperature selector is set to auto. Make sure duct overheat lights are extinguished. Pressurization, we want to check. So we set this to check, make sure the auto fail and standby light illuminate. Then we go to AC uh, manual. We want to close the valve, make sure it closes. Which it does, then open again. And then we have to check the same system for DC. We don't have to close it all the way because it takes a while, but make sure it does close. We want it to, and open it up again. Let's check and set it back to auto. Okay, so I just set my altitude, 30,000 feet, and if you look at the index here, 30,000 feet gives a cabin altitude of 3,600 feet, which is set here. The landing altitude is 147, so 150 set into the landing altitude window to make sure we're on ground mode. Make sure it's on the index as well, so our pressurization is set. Strut over you test, make sure the lights are extinguished, and then you test it. And that is checked. Then you check the essential power system, make sure each that the light illuminates for each source that is not currently functional and extinguishes for each functional source. It's checked, galley power can now come on. And DC meter. I want to check the essential TR. It should not be charging or discharging. Volts should be approximately 24 volts, which is good. And for the TR1 and TR2, you should see it, them charge, which is correct. Generator drive disconnect guards are closed. Low pressure lights are illuminated. That's fine. Temperature should be normal. That's checked. Bus ties are closed. Field ties are closed as well. And no uh, kilowatts should be on the generators. That is checked. Okay, now we go to the lower. And um, what we need to check are fuel quantity indicators, so we need to test those, make sure those work. Um, a proper fuel check will be done yet later, 
um, when we get our load sheet and everything. So we'll check if our fuel is really what we need for our flight. We're just going to check our gauges, make sure they work. Now we do a fuel boost pump test. So this is done so, where you turn on all forward pumps first. Make sure all lights extinguish. They do. Turn them back off. Make sure all lights illuminate again. And then you do the same thing for the aft pumps. Make sure all lights illuminate or extinguish. Okay, and once you turn them back off, all lights illuminate again. As checked, you're going to do the same thing for the cross feed. Always set them to a different position. Make sure the lights illuminate and then extinguish. And then set them back. Make sure the lights illuminate and then extinguish again. That is checked. Um, now because we're only using so much fuel, um, we have the same amount of fuel in each tank. The center tank uses, or the AP uses the center tank, so I have about 100 pounds extra fuel in the center tank. But what is needed is, since if all fuel tanks are equal, and each engine uses its own fuel tank, which it does. Engine one uses tank, the left tank. Engine two uses the right tank, and engine two, or engine three, sorry, uses the right tank. And engine two uses the middle tank, center tank. That means if all, if all tanks here are equal in quantities, your valves should be closed here on tank one and three, and open on tank two. Um, that's the configuration for the fuel system. I just checked. Then you want to make sure that these are open so that the engines can even get fuel in the first place. And so that is checked. Alright. We now select our audio selector here or panel, set PA and interphone. Let's check, make sure fuel icing is checked. So, what we're, we're quickly going to test, make sure all lights work. So, we're going to turn them on shortly. Make sure lights illuminate and then extinguish. And do the same thing for when turning back off. That is checked and no icing lights here are illuminated. Okay. Come to our hydraulic brake interconnect test. Open the guard, select it to on, and make sure the light illuminates. And you can turn it back off. And that is checked. Hydraulic A pumps should be on. The overheat light should be extinguished. The low pressure light should be illuminated. The fluid shutoff valve should be guarded. The ground interconnect should be uh, closed. The A quantity should be sufficient. Um, best is it at full, but it's not, but that's okay. Can't refill it anyways anywhere, which is unfortunate because you used to be able to in version 2. Huh. I'll have to contact Jack for that. We're going to check the same thing quantity here for B. Make sure the overheat light is off. And we now do a hydraulic panel test. Now, that for some of you, this seems crazy. For those who go, are used to the modern aircraft, you usually never turn on hydraulics until you're ready for pushback. Well, not in the 727. You turn them on early on and keep them on for a while. That's just how it works. Um, and then you turn one off before pushback. It's how that works. So we have to do a system test. First, we got to turn on one of the electric hydraulic pumps. Make sure the pressure rises, the low pressure light distinguishes once you reach about 2,000 psi, and make sure the quantities stay. Okay. Then you move back because we depleted our brake pressure. We want to make sure it now recharges to about 2,800 psi or more, and that is checked. It does. And then you turn it off. You'll see the light illuminate. The pressure go down and then you want to do the same thing first electric pump too turn it on make sure the light extinguishes and the pressure is good and then the pressure here as well is good okay now you open the now you turn on the second one again the light should extinguish immediately because your pressure is already at at least 200 psi and then you open the ground interconnect you'll see the hydraulic a pressure rise to about 2800 psi and uh, but the lights should not uh, extinguish. That is that's fine. So they should not. That is correct. It's correctly simulated um, as well. And now we want to make sure that all flight control uh, enunciators here are extinguished, which they are. So mean that means all flight controls are working. Of course, before you do any of this, you would contact ground in the real world. But we're not in the real world, so we're not going to do that. And now we want to check our standby system. Make sure the quantities here are normal, which they are. 
Draw overheat light here is extinguished. And now we're going to do a rudder test. Since it has a standby system for the lower rudder, you want to open the guard. You want to turn off system A. You'll see that the rudder system A light will illuminate, which is correctly simulated. And then you will have to turn on the standby. By turning it on, there's no label for it, but by turning on the standby system, you'll have to switch it up. In the real aircraft, both guards and the switches are linked, so switching one, like opening one guard will open both of them, switching one switch up will switch both of them up. That's why turning it on is, in this case, off for this switch. And you should make sure that the on light here is illuminated, which it is. And this light will still stay illuminated, and that's totally normal and accurately simulated. Now we can close the guards and you'll see the lights extinguish. Okay, and we keep this in this configuration for the next couple of minutes. Make sure CSC oil cooler is in the normal position. No equip cooling off light, all these lights should be extinguished. And we check our engine instruments. Can't check it for temperatures that are normal, which they are. All quantities are checked and pressure should be at zero. And we can set our panel lights as we want them. Um, and that's how I want them. Okay, again, for fuel dump panel, make sure it's checked. So you can set our flight number here. Today it's 12. So 12. Everything here is normal and checked. Exhaust temperature is fine. Amperage is fine. I believe, yes, it's shared with the GPU, so that's the amount of amps the GPU is using. And um, because we we do have the ground, um connected we can go and set our packs to on we'll go ahead and do that we'll do a light test here make sure all lights illuminate usually this is set to off and off means the tests are off um, and so and yeah so actually it might be correctly simulated Hold up. Oh, wait, never mind. Position test. Yeah, that's the correct positioning. Okay, you, so the way it's simulated in this aircraft is when it's off, the system does not work at all. That's actually incorrect. Um, usually when it's off, set, you can describe by the FCOM if it's set to off, the system will work normally, and you'll see all the indications as they should be. But we're going to keep it in position test just so we can actually see it. Do a test here, make sure all lights illuminate, and that is checked. At this time, we're going to go ahead and program our SIVA. So we go to waypoint, waypoint 1, and our first waypoint today is I have to look at my, what I wrote down, as well as, um, as my flight plan on my second here. Our first waypoint is Dresden, D-R-N, B-O-R, but we're going to um, go through that by uh, through uh, actual navigation, no, VR navigation, and then after that we're going to use the SIVA. So we're going to use the flight, uh, the uh, waypoint after that, which is APCAS. And from here on out, it's going to be a little quiet here, and just program the SIVA until I have all my waypoints in that I need.
Alright, so our first waypoints, first nine waypoints of our flight plan have now been entered. We can now continue with our flows, which are now our first officer and captain flows. So we'll go and go to our first officer side, and we're going to check everything he needs to check. So first, the flight recorder test. Okay, so it's checked. Make sure the guards here are closed. Make sure his compass is set. Um, so I'm gonna make sure it's okay, both compasses are set, so we're not deceiving or anything. Do a uh, inter microphone monitor test. Passenger seatbelts can come on. Transponders can come on, and you can see it's go to standby mode. That's checked. We know heat comes back on. Check our ADP lights, make sure they work. Flight instruments, we're going to go ahead and check, make sure our speed is at zero. We're going to, I'm going to quickly do this here. Um, do flaps five, a set bugs, <coughs> and then I'm going to reset them. Okay. I'm going to set this to 220. Actually, no, I'm going to set this to 200. That's fine. So speed should be at zero, ADI should be good here, and our courses should agree here as well, that's good. Range can be five. Things check your altimeters are set, and we're good. We'll also check our mnemonic brake pressure, make sure it's at least one, one, zero. So make sure it's at least 1,100 to 1,400 pounds pressure, so PSI pounds per square inch. Which is checked <coughs> right at the mark. Okay, make sure stand standard air temperature is approximately true air temperature. At least on the ground, it should always be about the same. That is checked. The true air speed is a little wonky because of our winds outside. That's fine. Marker beacons, we go and check. Make sure each light illuminates. They do. Windshield and footer as required. Audio panel on set, and we'll do a GPWS test. Ride slow. Make sure off light illuminates. Make sure oh, the guard is stop. closed. Make sure these four Wind lights shear. illuminate. Wind shear. Wind shear. Terrain. Up. Airspeed low. Sink rate. Pull up. Terrain. Pull up. Don't sink. Don't sink. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Gear. Too low. Flaps. Too low. Terrain. Ride slope. Bank angle. Bank angle. 100. 50. 30. <coughs> 20. 10. 500. Now the captain's side. So first, make sure our main uh, gear and anti-skid guards closed. The lights. There's usually a test system as well, but it's not simulated in this. You test the systems. Go up here, do a stall warning. Right, the, the controls don't move. Um, they should. At least you see those move and the light extinguish. That's fine. Make sure the compass is good, which it is. Emergency ace lights armed. Okay. That is checked, and everything else here is set. So now our overhead should be complete. And I'll go down to the flight director to set this for departure, so I'm going to set go around. Okay. Make sure our mnemonic brake handle is off and safety. The B lights also check here. Flight instruments, we're going to check the same thing. Headings are good. Speed is zero. EDI is checked. RMI is checked. Everything here. Vertical speed is should be at zero, which is good. The flags are normal. Audio panel, go and set. Interphone, <coughs> NPA. Next is mock airspeed. So this is system A, one, and two. And system B, one, and two. 
windshield and foot air on. And you ought to ever test. This requires a hydraulic pressure. And this requires hydraulic the hydraulics to be on. This is why um, you usually keep it on until this is done. So you s check the upper rudder. It should move to the left. And the lower should move to the right. And it does. That's checked. Okay. Make sure your temperature is normal and checked. And now we do a light test. And you won't believe <coughs> that if you have the maintenance system on, you will actually have to do a light test because some of these lights can actually fail and you will have to replace them by just pu pushing on them. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it to you guys because I think all lights are fine. Yeah, they all look good to me. So, but yeah, if you see like one light that is not on, even even these lights, like even these, um, if you see one of those lights did not work, just by pressing on them, we'll replace them. And maybe it's just a 727-100 feature. I'm not sure. Because um, in the 100, I have this problem quite a bit. But So yeah, if you do have the maintenance system on, uh, not doing a light test actually does quite a bit. Yeah, believe it or not. So all lights uh, seem to work. Parker lights will also check these. Okay. They work. Flat lever again, we want to make sure they're in agreement. And then oil pressure lights, make sure they're on. And now we do a TCAS test just by pressing TCAS here. Make sure it's, it passes. And the indications TCAS are correct. Test pass. Checked. Make sure rain radar is on standby, <coughs> which it is. Dress ups are idle and take up trim will set. Press pressing the green area and take off trim will be set. Radio panel VHF frequencies. Um, I don't think I have a view for that. But frequencies are set. Now we just need to set our VOR, which is 11435. 11435. And we'll set our next VOR here, which is barman which is really far away so we're not going to test it in a moment or for decimal zero our course first our first course here is 218 we'll cancel that and we're going to listen to it so it said nav one on both to make sure it it's you can listen to it the morse code and that's checked you can also look at the miles on DME1 right here. Nine miles away. So, it works. Make sure also our rudder and alarm trim are free and zero. At this time, we do I for clearance, which set our initial altitude, which in this case will be 5,000 feet. Okay. Make sure our heading is set. Our initial heading is 218. Eight. Oop. Two, 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 zero first. And then minus two, two, one, eight. Okay, two, one, eight on both sides. Checked. And our transponder is set to two, zero, zero, one. That's fine. That's what we can keep. So if we're ready to push it, we're going to to push back we're gonna have to start our APU so with that procedure what we're gonna do is turn on our left aft center pump this one right here turn it on make sure the low pressure light extinguishes perfect turn on the APU make sure the field um, field tie is closed and then start the APU as soon as you see APU crank you can let go that the APU will start. You'll also see the APU light here illuminate. And the after air stair is now being closed and it's closed. You see the exhaust temperature rises slowly. Our amps will increase a little bit, that's normal. You should also see the battery discharge just slightly um, by starting the APU, which is fine as well. 
go to our AC meter here, select the APU, and as soon as the APU is available, and we'll know, you see our volts and our frequency should be good. It is 115 to 400, that's checked. Make sure exhaust temperature stabilizes in the green. It should uh, decrease in just a moment here. Ah, no, it's not going to because of the packs. So we're going to turn off the packs. We're going to have to. We're going to have to disconnect the uh, air cart. Now our EGT is good. Close the generator tie. Our GPU should come off automatically. We can also disconnect that now. It's our central power to APU. It's got a quiet, really quiet. Now 727-200, you can have both packs on. In this 100, you can only should only be able to select one, and that is the right pack that supplies the cabin. When at 200, you are allowed to use both packs. The APU is strong enough for that. Usually, it's a APU that's set for the 727-200 is allowed to have both packs. Okay. And that is done. APU has now been started. And we're good to go. So now, we need to now do our before start procedures. So now we, at this time, we'd expect to get our dispatch papers, our weights and everything. So we're gonna go and check our fuel now. Make sure we have sufficient fuel. Again, we said we needed about 20,000, which is, divided by three, is about 17 to 18,000, or 8,000, seven to 8,000. In this case, it's around 6,700 in each tank, which is perfect exactly what we need. We need to take our gross weight. Our gross weight is 148 to 150. And with that, I'm going to check my performance charts and make sure um, our 1.5 engines, make sure our EPR and everything is set. So flaps 5, 150 right here. V1, 135, and VR 135, and V2, 149. So we'll set that here. I wonder what if that's close. It says 137, 137, 149. 149 is right. It's actually 135. Okay, so 135. Uh, there and then V2 is 149. So about there and then plus 15 is 164. So around here. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on this side. Oops, one six four around there. And then one three five around there. Okay, now as well as our EPR is going to be calculated. I wonder what EPR gave us here. It gave us about two point one or five, right? Two point oh seven. Alright, let's see what um our actual uh, real performance charts give us. Today's flight. Our outside temperature is 29. Looks like 29. So, so it's about 30. Gives us. Okay, it is giving us 2.07 for center. It 
That is, if our air conditioning bleeds will be off for takeoff, but they will not be. That's why it's not going to be 2.07, it's going to be 2.04. So, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That's going to be our EPR. And, um, so that is set and checked. And we're good there. Takeout information has all been set, and now we're ready for pushback. So we set one pump on per tank. We set all out pumps here. And make sure the lights extinguish, which they do. Ground energy connect should be cl closed, and you'll see the pressure decrease as well as some indications for the A system illuminate. One hydraulic B system switch comes off for a pushback. This is when we should see the fuel, uh, the elevation fuel differential pressure light illuminate, but it doesn't, so it's not currently simulated. Um, and we do the before start checklist. I have a checklist here. Packer preparation completed. Anti skid checked and on. Saw warning has been checked. Emergency exit lights are on. Passenger sensor on. Windows on. Window heat is on. Anti ice is closed. Flat instruments were set and cross checked. Compasses are synced and cross checked. Airstreet warning has been set to A and checked. Mock energy warning has been checked. Radio, radar, and transponder are set and standby. Start levers are cut off. Parking brake is set. Rudder and electric are free and zero. Usher and interphone don't have, so, but still checked. Fuel set pounds for about 20,000 pounds. Uh, fuel hydraulics are checked. Your hands were cited. The papers are aboard. So that does a real checklist from the FCOM. So those are real normal checklist. Um, yeah. And I've just translated them to here. Okay, so now we go ahead and request pushback. Our runway is in that direction, so we need to push with our nose to the left. So, push pushback, start pushback. Ground to cockpit, please show me where you want to go. Okay, once we have pushed back uh, the truck go coming, we can go and set our beacon on. Our galley power must come off. Our packs need to come off as well. And make sure our start pressure is verified. Also, before we push back, we need to set our CO2 navigation to see the light extinguish. Clear for start checklist. Beacon on, galley off, packs off, start pressure is checked and before search is completed. Before we push back, we're expected to start at least one engine, and in this case, if it's the APU started first, we start engine okay. first. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect, set, parking brake. Reset. At 20% N2, we can s introduce fuel to the system. now. Start cut out, guard can be closed, and we'll go ahead and open the next one, which is number two, so it's one, two, three. Make sure everything stabilizes, the light extinguishes here. Um, you should actually also look at the center back light. Been inserted. Release parking brake. It's fine, okay. Once our engine is stabilized, we'll release the parking brake. Okay. Everything in the green here. Now, what here? Green. This is rising to the green. Alright, so we're good to go. Parking brake release. We'll start engine number two. Starting pushback, and you may start the engines. Thank you. So again, 20% and 2. Start valve here is open, that's what we usually need to check. I didn't do that earlier. 20% and 2. So there's our cutout. 
valve should close, that's checked. Exhaust temperature, everything here is rising, and then our low pressure light should illuminate or extinguish once we get more pressure here. Okay, not the yellow. That's checked. And our light is now extinguished. And that's when we can start our next engine. Should extinguish. Okay, there it goes. The pressure light should extinguish once we get hit reach the yellow. Operation complete. Please set parking brake. Is set. Is connecting tow. Stand by. There it is. Card can be closed. So engines haven't successfully started. We got all three engines online. So we're going to now wait till we get our uh, hand signal, that's when we're going to go ahead and do our next checks. And flows. Disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. I'll see you next time and have a safe flight. Seals given, so we can go ahead and head over here. Make sure our generators are given a good frequency and volts. And it's it's just by the limits. Okay, they're all given a little different. They will sync up later. So we can go ahead and close these. Make sure the volts here are the kilowatts are checked. Now the volts frequency should be synced. If they are, and the lights will not illuminate. Next source, uh, central power set the next source, which is generator one. Okay. Galley power can come back on. Boost pumps all can come on. Make sure all lights extinguish. Checked. Now do a hydraulic system A check and test. So we turn pump one off, which the low pressure light illuminates, which does pressure should not change whatsoever. Okay, then you turn off the second pump as well. You'll see the pressure decrease. Turn this back on, make sure this system can operate basically by itself. That's what we're testing here. And it does, and then we can turn this back on as well. Check, make sure ground services and doors are set, and then at this time we request taxi. Do the after start checklist. Ground equipment is cleared, fuel is set for takeoff, doors are checked, and after takeoff checklist is completed. So, the next procedure is a taxi out procedure. This is done when you start taxiing and going down to the runway. That's when you do all those checks, but there's no way on earth I can do this by myself taxiing, knowing where I'm going, at the same time doing all these flows. So, I'm simply going to do this as a after start procedure. So first thing first, we're setting flaps 5, make sure they extend, here's 2, and then 5, and make sure also our D devices will then turn green. Uh, they do, okay, green, and you can see it's green here as well, and our flaps are set to 5 on both indications. As checked, external lights, taxi light can come on. Runway turn off lights will be turned on at night. Logo light would also already be on. Wing anti ice should be closed. Engine anti ice set is required, but we definitely don't need it in the hot weather that we're in. Pedo heat comes on. Make sure lights extinguish. Navig 
nav instruments, you want to check that they're in sync, so once you start like turning or something, that um, everything is aligned. You do a safety relay bypass, so you just select it in the test position, and then you extend your speed brakes, and you should hear the sound. Let go, and you should be good. So, and then test it again. Okay, we're good. <coughs> Snap trim is set for takeoff, so we'll click here one more time, just in case we forgot earlier. DME is on, flight controls, go ahead and check. You just set my uh, yoke closer to me. So full left, full right, neutral, full down, full back, neutral. This time you would, in the physical aircraft, you would hold the nose wheels tiller and then do a rudder check as well. Full right, full left, and neutral. You can check the indications here. Um, so they work and they do. Okay? In an operation, make sure the indications are normal, and we just check that they all are. Make sure you can literally just sweep over it. Um, that's scary for a second. That they're all they all look the same, and they do. They all indications look the same, and they're all in the green, which is fine. Okay. Fuel heat you set is required. If the temperature is at about zero or below, you turn these on for a minute, but don't forget them because these are not automatic like in the 732. These are manual, and you have to turn them on by himself. In 72 they're automatic, they'll automatically switch off after a minute. And uh, not in these ones, these ones you have to manipulate yourself, so make sure once you turn them on, set a clock, because the clock not works, make sure it's a minute, and then uh, turn back off. But we don't need them, we're good, we're slightly above 0 degrees Celsius, which is perfect. And so we don't need to turn them on, we don't have to worry about it, woohoo. Hydraulics, all on, so raining pump turns on, make sure the low pressure light extinguishes. Make sure the elevator and fuel differential pressure here light extinguishes as well. Should have already earlier. Make sure the no equipment cooling light is extinguished as well, and the rudder load limiter lights also extinguished. You turn these, you close these valves up. Packs come on, and you should expect about three kilowatts per per um, generator, which is checked on each pack actually. So that's checked. That's normal and APU can now come off. Pressurization flight mode. And uh, let us check. We can now taxi. So we'll release our parking brake. And we'll increase our thrust slightly. Also something new I've installed is XP Realistic Pro. So you'll see a little head shaking here and there. That's what that is. Three bucks, not bad. And now we're just gonna take it down that one. The tiller is actually really sensitive on this aircraft, I'm not sure why. Um, early, it's earlier when I tested this aircraft it didn't seem so, but now it does. I'm not 100% sure why, honestly. Whoa, okay. okay I could possibly look at my flight controls. Um, let's go and do that now. Um, might as well. So joystick. Uh, 727, that's fine. Control sensitivity. Pitch. Okay, um, this time allow you to get more... So I'm gonna keep this here. But I'm gonna put this down to zero. Done. And let's see if that helps. Yeah, it actually helps. Whoa. 
but again, my rudder is really weird. Ah, no, my nose wheel steering is really weird. Let's see if I can... Nope, oh, that didn't help at all. <laughs> I tried disabling nose wheel steering, um, but that turns it off for the uh, rudder as well. Yeah, this is really... Oh, I need to get myself like a actual nose wheel tiller axis switch or thing or oh, it's so annoying. I never taxi straight. Nice. Increase our thrust here. I'm literally not touching the controls and it's already like going to the right. Like right now I'm on straight. Soon it'll turn to the right, like it will veer to the right. Here, I'll touch. See, da, ah, I didn't even touch it. Didn't even touch it. It's so weird. It's it's my joystick. I use my joystick as a as a, a tiller. It's the axis I use as a tiller. And I use my yoke for the flight control. And then if I do Airbus, I do the obviously the joystick for my flight controls. But it's just so weird. Okay, I'm going to slow down just a little bit. Check our speed by going to ground speed. We're at 26. <laughs> so let's go and slow down just a little bit here. Down to 20. Yeah. Alright, so before takeoff procedures, we're going to get that done now. We're going to turn on our weather radar. And this weather radar is actually really nice. I'm very well simulated. I actually like it a lot probably one of the only ones that are well programmed, well done. And um, yeah, so let's set that on, make sure the range, set the angle a little bit higher, because we are taking off, so let's get over there. 2.5, let's go and set it to 3. Okay. Straight weather radar is on, fuel heat is off, the departure briefing has been completed, so we're just going to take off, heading 218. We're going to go on the course of uh, our VR, which we're currently 10 miles away, and after that we're going to use aux nav. Okay, so that's our departure briefing there, quite simple, <laughs> and do our before start, before takeoff checklist. Anti-ice is closed, pitot heat is on, flight instruments and flight directors are set for departure, flight controls are checked, speed brake and flap warning has been checked, and D10, side blade trim are set, flaps are 5 and 5 green light, guide power is on, electrical, no lights, and a central 3, fuel heat is off. Hydraulic pressure quantities are checked normal, elevator and rudder lights are off, avion oxygen extinguished, flight and ground switch set to flight, air conditioning and pressure number 2 please are closed, set, cockpit doors locked, EQR and airspeed bugs are set, takeoff briefing is complete. So entering the runway, strobe lights can come on, runway turn off on, taxi off, okay, transponder set to TARA, so all the way to the right. And you should see that indication here, TARA. Go and increase our range a little bit, although we don't have any traffic whatsoever. Um, still going to set that there. Pretend like there is. I mean, a lot of this is pretend, so. Okay, we're going to stop right here. Okay. what this track here is, it's a little wonky. Okay. So, before takeoff, inboard lights and landing lights coming off, CSD oil cooler goes to ground off. Okay, auto pack trip set as required, we'll keep it on cutout, and then they clear for to start takeoff checklist. Ignition is on, it's not simulated, there's a guard up here for ignition, you flip it open and switch it on. Transponders on, landing lights are on, CSD oil cooler is off, outer pack trip switch is cut out, and before takeoff checklist is, is completed. So, release the parking brake, set on initial thrust. It's an EPR of 2.04. I bet it's going to be hard to manage. 2.04. 2.04, come on, 2.04. Ah, one of them's already over it. That's the problem about three engines. Okay, that's close, I'll get it. 
checked. Select. Nah, I won't let it. Eat. Okay. So we'll go to Navlock. Thousand five hundred. Let's go and set our, our climb thrust to about ninety percent N one. on our autopilot here. I'm going to increase my speed to 250 knots as soon as you reach about 3,000 uh, feet. Actually, 3, 000, exactly 3,740 or feet. Go ahead and set IS mode is right now. I guess hold. Don't you uh don't you descend on me now. Flaps coming up. I hate when it does that for you. Turn off, off. Okay, we're close to reaching our DME here. We're gonna set ox nav. And we're going to waypoint one. Understood. Auto brake disarmed, gear coming off. We'll set this to 300, which is our cruising altitude today. Staff out trim is not correct. You can see there's still plenty of staff trim to use, so that light is also not correctly simulated. Climb thrust is set. Make sure all indications are normal, which they are. Okay, I'm going to explain this in just a moment here. Um, CSC cooling should be back to switch to normal. And it is. Pack trim should be cut out, or pack trip should be cut out. Gear is off. Auto brake is disarmed. Auto pilot is set. So the after take off checklist, we're going to do now. Ignition is off. Passenger signs are on. Anti ice is closed. Gear is up and off. Flats are up and on lights. Auto pack trip switch is cut out, hydraulic suppression quantities are normal. Yep. Pressurization checked and set. We'll go and check it and we're doing good. And it take up is completed. So I remember um, when I was beta testing for V2 before it came out. I remember I uh, mentioned this to Jack. Um, that the real aircraft it sometimes has issues when it's climbing with the fuel pumps, and it makes sense because the fuel pumps, at least the forward ones, as you can see, are obviously in the front of the tanks. So if you're climbing and your nose is in the back, obviously the fuel is all going to swish back if there's not enough fuel. Let's say that the tanks are full. Of course, these lights will not extend, will not illuminate. So yes, it is an accurate simulation that if there's not enough, if there's not sufficient amount of fuel and it's all pressed to the back, obviously only the aft pumps will get, um, will be able to, or will have sufficient pressure for the light to stay extinguished, and the forward pumps obviously will not, so they will illuminate, and this is accurate, um, you'll think it's a bug, see, there you go, um, we're tilting down just a little bit, and here, since we're at 10,000 feet, we need to now increase our speed at 280, you'll see us level off, and you'll see that the lights will all illuminate, or extinguish, I mean, sorry, they should all extinguish if they do, there you go. It's accurate simulated because the fuel is now switched all 
is now even and now all the pumps are being able to be used. Now if again if we were climbed at a high angle, um, you'll see that the lights will illuminate again. So anyways we're at 10,000 feet, landing lights can come off. Um, cooling doors we need to adjust if, uh, let's say our packs were below 40 degrees Celsius, which is around this mark here, uh, we'd have to open our cooling doors, which, like, all the way. But that's fine here. But there you can see that the, especially the center tank, because it's got the most amount of fuel, will, uh, have this issue first. And that's accurate. It's really well done. Good job, Jack. Even though little, some little bugs hopping around here and there, um, it's still incredible what you've got. And, uh, I'm really proud of you for doing that. It's incredible. Um, Anyways, fuel usage, we monitor, make sure fuel flow is fine. Cruise data, we compute operating uh, systems with check. So we check our crew and cabin zone air supply and overheat lights, make sure they're all extinguished. Go and check our supplies here and check our actual cabin temperature. That is checked. And make sure the light is extinguished here and our pressure here is still normal, which it is. So check our CSD units in temperature and rise temperatures should be all normal and out of the yellow, which they are, and that is checked. Make sure our engine 1 and 3 strut already lights are extinguished as well. Go and check our generator volt and frequency again. They're all normal. Okay, central power, make sure the light is still extinguished, which it is. DC meter, check our central TR, make sure our answer is zero. Check our TR, make sure it's still charging. TR2 is charging battery is good and our bolts are incredibly high now that they're charged. Um, generator loads are checked, they should be balanced. Fuel heat is off and everything is normal, temperature is good. Drone quantities and pressure should be good and pressurization has been checked as well. Climb at a good rate. And uh, yeah, everything looks good. So that is after takeoff checklist or after takeoff flows at 10,000 feet. We're already at 17,000 feet by the time we're done. That's how much you have to check on this aircraft because it's so high maintenance. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful aircraft, and I'm looking forward to it to a part two on this. All right, so distance, time. Okay, we're about one minute away from waypoint one. Then we're gonna go to waypoint two, and uh, yeah. And once we reach waypoint three, we'll be able to program waypoint one again. And that'll be fun. At about 18,000 feet, we can go and turn off our seatbelt sign. Um, once, as long as there's no turbulence, we can turn it off and then let everybody off to enjoy themselves. You can use the bathroom, of course. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something about this. If it's not, if you did not, just let me know. I was thinking of doing a tutorial um, for this aircraft, but I decided to do it this way instead. So if you want to, so if there's something you want to learn about it, um, you can learn quite a bit about it just through watching this video. Um, but of course, I'm not going to do a tutorial because there's because um, uh, there might be something wrong about doing it. Um, since I'm not a real pilot, people will be like, oh, no, I don't trust him. I don't want to go through that, um, but everything I've done today in this aircraft comes directly from the FCOM. I didn't make anything up. Um, it's all real. Uh, none of it is <laughs> made up, I promise, except for whenever I program the SIVA. That's that's made up a little bit, because um, I don't know when they really program the SIVA. I don't know that. I don't have footage of it, um, and this FCOM doesn't describe the SIVA doesn't describe any navigation whatsoever, except for VOR navigation. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, I still hope you guys enjoyed. And, oh my god, it looks so beautiful. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you.